Hello, Dave here, and welcome to Youth Wednesday. Today we have a special guest who has an awesome family. Her mom is actually a beast. She climbed this huge thing one time on a mission trip, and she did it, and very impressive. She's also been. She also grew up here at St. Mark's Church and went through the school and spent a lot of time here in our community. Uh, she's done many things with the church, and she is actually also a beast. Um, so welcome today, the woman of the hour, Emma Powers. <laughs> thank, <Welcome> you. Emma. <laughs> thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Well, great. Uh, thank you that you can be here today. It's awesome. Uh, could you tell us a little about yourself? Some people that might not know you, you know, where you went to schools, uh, where you are now you know, in your future plans? Yeah, so I was born in West Palm Beach and have lived in the same house ever since. Um, I went to St. Mark's from pre-K four to eighth grade. They didn't have a pre-K three or pre-K two. I don't know what they're even going down to now, but um, I went from pre-K four to eighth grade. Um, and then I moved on to Suncoast and then I went to um, UF for undergrad and now I'm in UF Medical School. Um, I've gone to uh, St. Mark's Church my entire life. I had my baptism, my confirmation, everything um, and went to Sunday school and was a huge part of youth group during sixth to 12th grade. Um, went on mission trips and did youth group every week. So kind of my backstory a little bit definitely definitely yeah you definitely were a part of the church a lot you're definitely a part of the youth group as well i mean you even became a leader um and uh and helped us out with the middle schoolers and stuff like that too mm -hmm. so you're you are awesome so thank you for all you've done already so and there should be more in the future i hope yes i hope so too I hope awesome. we can start doing mission trips somewhat soon. Definitely. Yep. I hope so. But, uh, you know, what, that's amazing. I mean, that's, it's pretty impressive uh, becoming a doctor. What type of doctor do you want to become? So that's still a question mark. I'm in my second year of medical school. So um, we do basically book work our first two years and we go into clinics our second two years. So I still have some time. I'm kind of set on working with kids. And it's kind of whether I want to do surgery or medicine um, and cardiology is also super interesting. So mm. kind of thinking along the lines like pediatric cardiology, maybe pediatric surgery. So I kind of know in the realm of what I want to do, but I'm not a hundred percent sure yet. That's awesome. Well, I knew if I had a kid, which I do, but he's 18, <laughs> but if I had a, a smaller child and they had complications, I would definitely take them to you without a doubt without a doubt okay. well when you become a, a full doctor not yet but <laughs> not yet yeah <laughs> too fun so what you know why did you choose to become a doctor did, did someone or something lead you that way my mom's a nurse so i think that definitely influenced my perception on medicine um but i think ultimately kind of was thinking about what I wanted to do with my life. And I feel like a lot of people kind of go into what they think will best suit them and help the community around them. Um, and I think that goes for any job that you get. And I kind of viewed medicine as the foundation to life that if you're not healthy and don't have the basic needs that it's hard for you to excel in whatever you're doing, whether it's your job or school. Um, so I kind of wanted to be there for those people when they were going through something in their life and kind of help build back that foundation. So that's ultimately why I chose um, medicine. And I also really like surgery. So that was kind of like why I decided to do like doctor route versus like nursing or PA, I really wanted to kind of like get into surgery. But now that I've actually been in medical school, I really enjoy the medicine side of things too. So yeah. that's awesome. It just further proves, you know, why you are the way you are. You're just amazing. So that's great. That's great. <laughs> 
So what, like growing up, what were some of your uh, favorite TV shows like in elementary, middle school, high school, and uh, like now? So I think one of my fondest memories from um, elementary school was my sister would go to high school. So I had to wake up at 6 a.m. when she had to. And so I would always watch either the news or TV shows with my dad in the morning. And I would watch um, Mr. Rogers. And that was like a really good memory of mine. I think it was old at the time when I was in elementary school, but it was still on in the wee hours of the morning. So that was probably like, I don't know if it was necessarily my favorite show, but it was one of the best memories I had connected to a show. Um, I think in middle school, I really enjoyed like Disney, Nickelodeon, like Wizards of Waverly Place, Sweet Life on Deck, or Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, all those kinds of shows. Um, high school, I would definitely say Bones. Um, it's okay. not on anymore, but that was definitely one of my favorite shows. And then now I've kind of transitioned more into just like feel good shows. So like the British Baking Show, just very like feel good, calm. I can always like have a smile on my face or comedies, um, nothing too intense. I actually steer away from medical shows now because I want to just like decompress after the day. Mm -hmm, right. And I pay too much attention of like, what's the diagnosis and stuff like that. So <laughs> I just stay away from that. That's funny. That's great. Well, you know, cool. Yeah, thank you for sharing because I know, uh, well, it looks like at least one of those shows kind of helped you want to groom you to be like a, in the medical field as well. So, yeah, which is pretty cool. Or you already, you already had that idea probably <laughs> at that time. So tell me, what was one of your favorite mission trips? Ah, this one's tough because I think, um, everyone or every single mission trip kind of has their like own special little place in my heart. Right. Um, That's good to hear. <laughs> I want to say probably Tennessee, which was my first mission trip I've ever, I ever went on. Um, we were staying in the cabins and it was definitely out of my comfort zone. And I felt like I grew a lot that week. Um, you know, like sleeping without air conditioning, the bathrooms were kind of like outdoor camping bathrooms, that kind of stuff. Um, and then also we like went out into the community and really interacted with the individuals there and also interacted amongst the other youth groups that were there. Um, so I think when I came home from that mission trip, I really felt the change. And I think that was the first time I'd, there definitely, poverty in like West Palm area for sure um, but I think that was kind of the first real experience of seeing it outside our own community and realizing that there's a lot of other places that need help. Um, I would say a close second would be when I the tables kind of turned and I was able to be a leader on a mission trip because um, I kind of was even though I'd been on a lot of mission trips, there was still that opportunity to be like, wow, it's a, it's a lot different being a leader and kind of having to separate yourself from the community aspect and really focus on the students that are there and helping them grow and helping them kind of see the world in a different light. And I think that was definitely a challenge, but also eye-opening to me and something that hopefully I can do in the future when COVID ends. Because <laughs> um, I'd really like to continue to grow in that leadership area and um, kind of give back what gave so much to me. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, I know I would love for you to do that. You definitely have time and we're doing something. I, I want you, I want you there. Because you are, you know, you have, uh, definitely have leadership abilities without a doubt. Uh, you're definitely a, 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 a leader and you've been on so many mission trips, you know how they go and you know, um, you know, you, you help prepare the way, not even, not just for the youth, but you know, you help prepare things for me as, you know, one of the leaders as well. So um, the, uh, it'll be, yeah, I'm looking forward to the next one that we go on. That's for sure. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> um, 
What do you miss uh, most about St. Mark's? So that's, I guess I could like go from two angles because I also, I went to school and church. Mm. Um, the school aspect, you know, I, I've like now that, well, I'm only 23, but kids are somewhat in the future. <laughs> um, I've kind of thought about like, oh, should I like bring them to a private school, public school? And that has like made me reflect on uh, my experience at a private school or at St. Mark's. Um, and I kind of always say that I grew really close with the people that were in my class because the classes were smaller. I think that was definitely a benefit. But people always have the perception that, oh, private schools don't give you as good of an education as public schools because they're focused on um, the religious aspect. But I would argue I at least got the same education, if not better education. I feel like um, the teachers were really good, really attentive, and I definitely grew in my academic side of things at St. Mark's. I don't feel like I missed out on anything. Um, and I think even the religious classes that we had were, you know, Episcopalian related, but then we also did talk about other religions and how they kind of interconnect with Christianity and seeing the world from a different point of view, which I think is also very important. The church, I just miss um, being there and being surrounded by the people that are there. I kind of consider it like a second home. I kind of know that mm -hmm. no matter what happens, I can always return there. Mm -hmm. and feel accepted and talk to anyone that's there whether I knew them from when I was a baby to maybe they're new members and I'm just meeting them for the first time I feel like everyone kind of has that like camaraderie so yeah I definitely miss going to services and I especially miss going to services when I'm back home mm. um like at least right now right but I've found throughout like the mission trips and my experiences in high school, like going to church and everything, I've found a church here that I really enjoy. And it's kind mm. of the same people. I, it's interesting. Like, I wonder if it's just luck or not, but it's the same kind of people that I'm surrounding myself with here, which is nice. That's great. <clears throat> so is there like a, uh, um... Do you, do you see other people, like, do you see, when you're at church up there, do you see, like, does it, do, does it remind you of people back here, like certain people, like, oh, that person acts like such and such, or um, not really, or just? Yeah. Well, so the church I go to, it's called Chapel of the Incarnation, so it's pretty tiny, um, but it's mainly students. And so oh. we always have, we do the service, and then we do lunch or dinner after it because uh, it's on Sunday nights rather than Sunday mornings okay. mm -hmm. and it just feels like a youth group like it feels like our old youth room the like building's a little bit older there's couches and everything and mm -hmm. um we kind of just sit around and eat and talk I'm trying to think if there's like anyone that really sticks out to me they're like oh it reminds me of this person and I don't think I can but I feel like the entire environment is just very similar to youth group that's awesome that's cool yeah Sounds like a, that sounds cool. Well, good. I'm glad you found somewhere to go up there for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. That's great. Um, you know, name, can you name some of your favorite teachers that you had here at St. Mark's? You know, uh, yeah. they act, actually, they're going to give me a stipend for, as for, <laughs> no, I'm, te I'm teasing, but yeah, I'm sure you have a couple because they're, we, we've had some, uh, they're all awesome, but yeah. Who's some of your yeah, favorite? Um, in elementary school, I had Ms. Schmid, who I don't think is there anymore. She was my third grade teacher. Um, I remember this one time I forgot to get my notebook signed by my mom. It was like my agenda. <laughs> and I tried to say like, no, I did. <laughs> um, and she was like, I, I just remember this very distinctly because she was like, it's not really about the fact that you didn't. Um, She's like, I'm just make sure you get it signed next time. It's not about not getting it signed. Just don't like lie and say that you like. Oh no. I mean, it's like if you're honest and messed up, I forgot to get it signed. It goes over a lot better than trying to like squeeze your way out of it. Um, <laughs> so that's one of the lessons I definitely learned from her. Um, and she that's also, 
I'm not very good at this, but she was a stickler for saying yes instead of yeah. And I've gotten really, I'm still really bad at it, but she <laughs> sticks in my mind. Uh, Miss Ladd, I also had in fourth grade. I remember I was having some, like a tough time because my sister had gone off to high school. So it was my first time like being at St. Mark's alone. And so that was a little um, different. And she like really helped me through that and definitely made it a good experience. Um, and then in middle school, I would say Miss Lubeck and Robeson definitely stood out to me. Um, one, they were great people, but two, I've also I also learned a lot. There's even times where like the writing skills and stuff come back to me, and <laughs> when I'm writing things, or um, there's things I learned in science class that I've learned again, but I still remember it from that class and we'll kind of like picture back to that class. That's awesome. Um, but both of them were just great um, teachers in general, but also good mentors to have. That's great. Yeah, good memories and, and good, good teachers without a doubt. Definitely got you prepared. I mean, even in college, so because you go back mm -hmm. to that. So that's pretty cool. That's cool, pretty cool. So, um, Switching gears, maybe a little harder of a question. You know, what what do you think the pur purpose of life is? This is definitely a hard question. It is a hard. Um, question. Please don't I ask like me. I, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like everyone's purpose is kind of different, so it's hard to like define the purpose of life very like existentially, like why God put us here to live life is kind of I feel like it's such a hard question to answer um but I think in some aspects we're supposed to kind of go through the tribulations of life and have that support around us I think it would be really hard if we didn't have other humans around us to interact with and I think part of the purpose of life is to interact with the other I mean humans animals animals are great I have a cat <laughs> definitely helps me through some hard times but um, having that communication and that interaction and having like a love and I mean every human kind of wants that sense of community as well um, it's hard to answer why we're here mm -hmm. but I think while we're here we might as well take advantage of being with other humans and loving each other well yeah i think you just said it that that could be the purpose so being together and, and loving each other so and and loving oh you're kind of frozen oh, there we go oh. i think i think you Am said I back? Yeah. okay you're kind of frozen it's okay <laughs> uh i think you said that, you know the purpose so, you know, hanging out with each other and loving each other. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the uh, definitely I had to agree with you on that. And, uh, you know, it, we are a social being and we need each other. And in times of in times of need, we need each other. And God sends those people to us and mm -hmm. and with them through God, they, they help us. And uh, it's it's I think it's a never ending process so which is yep um thank you for answering i know it's very difficult so, um what does this world need more of i would say compassion mm. um definitely with like everything going on politically and socially and covid and all that kind of stuff um i think just listening to people kind of taking a step back and realizing most people do have the same end goal and if we like really sit back and talk to people and listen um we could probably come to a good compromise um i think we kind of see the world we tend to see the world from our own perspectives without kind of being empathetic and seeing the world from another person's shoes and uh, to really kind of hopefully bring the world to a better place. Right, with compassion, that's great. Yep, it's uh, the, yeah, I have to agree with you. That's, that's definitely, the world definitely needs that without a doubt. Mm -hmm. So um, thank you for answering that one too.
I mean, that's hard. You know, how, how do you show love to others? I mean, I, I've seen it. I've seen you do it on mission trips and stuff, but, but I want to, I would like to know, like how you see yourself. How do you see yourself? You know, how do you show love to others? I always think back to like the language or the love languages, um, which I guess is like how you show your love for others. Um, and I think my top two would probably be communication and acts of service. I really like talking with people and hearing their stories and um, understanding who they are. And I think the other one is active service. So whether that's, you know, my friend's uh, father just recently passed away. And so like I bought groceries for him and that's kind of, even though it's something small, that's how I showed I care about you. And nice. this is how I'm going to show that I care about you. Um, and it can be on bigger things like mission trips where that's an act of service. Um, and part of it is trying to show my commitment to God and my love for God. And that's why I'm serving others. But a part of it is also that's how I feel like I can best show other humans that are living my love. That's awesome. Yep. I've seen, I've seen you do it without a doubt. <laughs> um, what, what are three things that you believe about God? I think that one of the big things that I always keep in my mind is that he's forgiving. Mm. I've even gone so far to like, you know, kind of struggle with the idea of hell because of how forgiving he is. And if we are willing to ask for forgiveness, I feel like he is all forgiving. So that's kind of something, I mean, it's not an excuse to just go out and do anything, but it is something that I keep in mind um, that he is a forgiving person. And it also tries to make me forgive others as well. Um, I also said that he's always present. I think no matter like what I'm going through in life, I kind of always revert back to God and I always feel his presence, especially when it's needed. And I feel like he's definitely always present and around. And kind of the third thing ties into that is that his presence isn't always when you're by yourself, but it can also be when you're with others and mm -hmm. God can be in those people and kind of showing himself through those people. Mm -hmm. I mean, and as we were just saying, sometimes God sends people to be with you. And I think that's definitely true. Um, and he can kind of show himself through those. Awesome. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I'm glad, I'm glad that you believe those things about God because they're all true. Yep. That's awesome. Um, what do you want to tell current youth group members, um, you know, is there anything that you would want to say to them? Any any advice or anything like that? I definitely say embrace the relationships that you're building within youth group. Um, you know, I look back and I don't know how youth group the structure is right now, but at least when I was in youth group, there was a lot of people not from St. Mark's as well. And I grew just as close of relationships with those people as with the people I went to class with every day. Right. Um, and there's still people I talk to and lean on in times of need. And I think it's really important to keep those relationships alive and cherish them because they are definitely special relationships and ones that you don't come across very often. And it's hard. I mean, I think I took for granted a little bit how open we were with each other, like at youth group and just talking about our vulnerabilities or things going on with life. And it's not always like that outside of youth group so it's definitely nice to have those relationships and to have gained those relationships through youth group awesome so you hear that you to take <laughs> <laughs> were you trying to say anything during that time oh the only thing that i was going to add is definitely take advantage of the mission trips when i start coming back because uh -oh. i can when i was in or whatever it is a little bit scary and out of your comfort zone but it's definitely worth it yes um 
going out of your comfort zone is is a is a good thing, right? So mm -hmm. it helps it helps you uh, definitely grow. It's when true learning really happens, um, and um, and you see that you know things are uh, are a little bit different than what you perceive sometimes. So mm -hmm. um, so stepping out of the comfort zone is definitely a good thing. So I agree. Um, and to, both, to end it all, is there anything else that you just want to say in general to people at St. Mark's or just whatever? Yeah, I feel like I haven't gotten a chance to really like thank the people at St. Mark's. I know, I mean, when I was in youth group, it was like we would do stock dinners and buying stocks and mm -hmm. Um, I remember I like collected soccer balls one year for, for the kids in Kenya and stuff like that. And I just like, thank you to the youth or to St. Mark's and the community because it has really built who I am today. Um, I've been there since I was a baby and I really feel like a lot of who I am today was because of the people that are at St. Mark's and the people that supported the youth along the way. Um, and I feel like I haven't gotten a chance to really say thank you so or thank you enough because I don't think there is enough thank yous in the world to thank St. Mark's and the people of St. Mark's and how much they've impacted my life but I don't think I would be where I am today or the person I am without St. Mark's. Well said. You see St. Mark's you do matter in in all the lives here at St. Mark's it's awesome and Emma just proved that so yeah, thanks, Emma. Thank you for saying thank you. Um, but yeah, it's it. There's this community here at St. Mark's is amazing, and uh, yeah. they um, they want what's best for each and every one of us. So I have to agree. Awesome people. Well, Emma, thank you so much for coming on, and uh, you. It's always good to chat, chat with you and catch up and. Um, and I know you're really busy up there at, <laughs> at UF and um, keep on keeping on. I know, I know the workload's heavy and, and, yeah. and what you're studying is a lot. Um, I can only imagine what you are going through. So, but it's something that you really love and I, I definitely see you going in that path. So God has chosen a great path for you. So that's awesome. So thank you. Thank you for having me. It's Absolutely. good to talk to you. Yeah, it's always good to talk to you. So thanks again. And I know you enjoyed uh, listening to Emma and learning more about her. And don't forget to LGLO hashtag. The hashtag comes last because loving God and loving others always comes first. So see you next time. Bye. Uh-oh, you're evaluating my work. I am. Are you subscribed? I will with a red button. And give us a thumbs up. I'm a fan. Of course.